Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Yeah, Hello, yeah, Jinix. My full name. How are you? <laughs> Happy Friday. How are you? Good, yeah, good, good, good. Good morning, Rufai. Ojinika Ojiope. <laughs> you can't get it. You can't. We're missing to the Abiela today. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, happy you also Friday. Tundu. Miss you, miss you, miss you. Can't wait to see you on Friday. Ah, oh, Monday. 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 No, Friday is my kid. favorite day. Friday, Friday is my favorite day. You know Friday. that. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, accused of killing 10 black people at a supermarket in Buffalo, appeared in court on Thursday and was indicted by a grand jury. Gendron shot a total of 13 people on Saturday, May 14th, in a predominantly black neighborhood of Buffalo. Authorities are continuing to investigate the possibility of a hate crime and terrorism charges. In the United Arab Emirates, world leaders continue to pay their respects to the country's late ruler, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan, who died on Friday, May 13th. At the age of 73, Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari on Thursday embarked on a journey to convey his condolences and to congratulate the country's new president and ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, as well as to renew bonds of the long-standing friendship between Nigeria and the UAE. Under sports, Tottenham women's forward Choma Ubogagu was charged with anti-doping violation on Thursday and was handed a nine-month suspension. The 29-year-old, who has three England caps, admitted to the violations relating to the banned substance, Canrenon, a medication that was prescribed for her in the United States to treat acne. The Independent Regulatory Commission imposing the suspension accepted Ubogagu had committed the violations unintentionally. Under entertainment, Grammy Award-winning musician Rihanna and rapper ASAP Rocky have welcomed their baby boy. The couple became parents on May 13 in Los Angeles, California. Rihanna first revealed her pregnancy with a belly-bearing Harlem photo shoot in January this year. During her pregnancy, Rihanna stunned in designer looks that showed off her growing bump, setting social media abuzz. Finally, Britain's royals, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William, and Kate Middleton joined Hollywood star Tom Cruise on a star-studded red carpet at Leicester Square in London for the premiere of Top Gun Maverick, in which Tom Cruise reprises his role as U.S. Navy pilot Pete Maverick Mitchell more than three decades after the release of the original film. No turning back now. Well, let's begin what's trending. A former governor of Cross River State, Donald Duke, was trending on Thursday after a video surfaced online where he appeared to be advising Nigeria's former vice president and a presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, to abandon his presidential ambition. Well, in the video, the former governor said that Atiku has been in the race to become Nigeria's president since 1992 and that it is time for him to give up his ambition after several attempts. Let's take a listen before we come back for some reactions. Tuku Abubakar has been contesting the presidency since 1992. Indeed, there is really no election since 1992 that he has not participated in. He ran against Abiola in 99. He ran at first as governor, then as vice president. In 2003, he picked a form. And that was the crisis that, that was what led to the crisis between him and Obasanjo. 2007, he ran, I think he ran on AD or, or so. 11, he ran, came back to PDP, right? He ran, um, was it 11? He ran in 11 against Jonathan. 15, he ran. 19, he ran. 23, he wants to run. Ah, bah, now only you did. A time comes when you look at it and say, it's enough. Let me be a kingmaker rather than this king. Well, I think... Um Donald Duke said, made a lot of points, but let me take a tweet from Nefertiti, who wrote, Donald Duke said, and I quote, Nigerian youth's lack of interest in politics 
is as a result of bad candidacy. The APC and the PDP has never given Nigerians the opportunity to elect a good leader. They keep fielding expired candidates. I'll go with Donald Duke. I mean, this is commonsensical. Uh, Rufai, I heard you say uh, state speech. <laughs> <It's> state speech. <laughs> no, no, but, but I feel but like he can the run facts. as much as he can. He stated the facts. Alaji Atiku Abaka has run in every elections in this country since 1992. He was an aspirant under the Social Democratic Party, vied against MQ Apiola in the 93 and the 92 93 primaries that was held in Jos. Afterwards, I think the only time he didn't run was probably General Sonia Abacha taking over from 93 after the interim government, you know, till 98 when he passed on. But as soon as Politics resumed in 1999 under Abu Salami Abu Bakr, and leading up to 1999 elections, he started running again. He was elected governor of uh, what's it called, uh, uh, Adama State. And I think that they replaced him. He became vice presidential candidate, and Boni Haruno took over his position and became governor then. So he's running every election. Mm -hmm. So let him keep running. At least as much as he can run, <laughs> as much as his energy takes him, he should keep running. That's his ambition. But for me, what concerns me is what keeps a lot of Nigerians running helter-skelter. There's insecurity in their country. General Lucio Gobas just said something very indicting. And I think every more million Nigerian should hold on to that thing. That government can actually end it, this insecurity, if they want to. And he stated something very seriously that I should start seeing reaction even from the presidency very soon. Absolutely. Because there's a big indictment that nobody's doing anything. There's an economic quagmire. There are problems every year, everywhere. Today, I penned a little letter in this thing where I talked about what the next Nigerian president should do. Going forward, we should be paying $4 trillion on subsidy. Now we are beginning to subsidize aviation fuel. That's what it has come to now. Because the aviation fair owners cannot, uh, the, the oil and owners cannot make a deal with the marketers. The city they are going to sell at uh, higher rates, zero point zero nine nine two dollars. That's the price. That's over six hundred dollars. We don't have, we don't even know the cost of the naira. The naira is raising six hundred naira to the dollar on the parallel market today. Absolutely. There are too much problems. We want a leader that can provide solutions to the problems. Mm. But if anybody wants to run. It should keep running. I know, but politicians it should keep are running. so funny. Not the politician. You know that this video um, occurred, I believe, earlier this month. But last week, Atiku posted a video of Donald Duke endorsing him at an event, attributing this caption to the former governor. He wrote, the situation we find ourselves today is perhaps the worst this country has ever been. It will require all the attributes that you have. You are a veteran in this battle, and your success will be our collective success. I mean, this is so strange. <laughs> How did that well, happen? Like, oh, well, I don't know. see. I think this uh, much ado about nothing. Okay. And it's as follows. Uh, the last quote now from uh, Donald Duke. Donald Duke. Duke. Yeah, he may have made that statement at the beginning of the race, and he has the right to change his mind. Change his mind, okay. Okay, so I don't know which one comes first. Uh, the video Whether, I played earlier when, came uh, around April 1st, and then this was just last week. Okay, so yes. the, the, so the latest he in changed, time. Yes, he the changed The latest his in mind. time is the endorsement. Correct. Right? Okay, he has the right, <laughs> right to change his mind. <laughs> in the first one, <laughs> the question he raised, and you know, upon which he then changed his mind, is a moral question. Mm -hmm. To say that, look, you can't be uh, running perpetually uh, you've been running since 1992. Okay, if this one is the latest in time, then that is the one that we'll probably will go with. However, why I said that first one mm. about uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar being a perpetual candidate uh, is just a moral point. What the Constitution of Nigeria asks for is qualification under Section 131 of the 1999 Constitution, which states the qualification criteria for anybody who wants to be president of Nigeria. Now, once he meets the criteria under that constitution, if he likes, he can, he can run until his working stick fails him. It is now up to his uh, political party to consider him good enough right. and field him or not. And if they field him, it is now up to the Nigerian people uh, to decide whether they want him 
or not. So that is that about that. But, you know, Donald Duke is entitled to his own opinion, and he can change his mind tomorrow if he so wishes. No problem. But he addressed, uh, you know, certain other issues that I find even more relevant. The first is his uh, position on zoning. When he said that, look, we can't keep having leaders from only one part of the country. And I don't think that after eight years of uh, President Buhari's uh, presidency, that there should be another northerner uh, taking over from him to come and take another eight years of northern presidency. His point is that he's in support of equity and justice. And that he wants a country where people can have a sense of belonging. Those, for me, are the more important points he made in this uh, video that is on, on the screen. People don't have a sense of belonging because they feel excluded. And the people of the Southeast, they've said that much. Certain other groups in the Southwest have also said that much. The people of the Middle Belt, the Middle Belt Forum, they are saying the same thing, that we don't have a sense of ownership or belonging. And that is not good for you know, um, national harmony, the cause of peace and stability. He also made the point that, look, the kind of uh, leadership that we have in Nigeria now is disgraceful. That mm -hmm. was his last point in that, uh, in that uh, video, where the word disgraceful may be uh, very strong, uh, but that is his view. His opinion, He says, yes. we need capable leaders. And truly, everyone will agree with him that we need uh, capable leaders. So he's exercising his freedom of uh, expression and he's free to it, he's free to change his mind. Uh, it is for you and I and others to decide who we think that capable person is. And that is why the continua, uh, continuous voter registration exercise that is going on. That was why uh, I kept calling on people. If you have not registered, go and get your PVC. That's why civil society groups are saying, if you are eligible to vote, get your PVC. So that in 2023, we go out there Many people in this society, they talk about uh, we want uh, uh, good leaders, we want good leaders. But when it is election time, they don't vote. the elite, they don't come out. The whole of uh, Ikoye and uh, Victoria Island will be like a ghost town yeah. because all of them have fled to Dubai or UK or US and they are monitoring the election <laughs> from afar. Yes. Like, they, like uh, they ask them to do the, that. The only people that will come out are yeah. the ordinary people yes. uh, you know, who will even collect money to go and vote. Democracy is supposed to be participatory. It's supposed to be about choice. So get your PVC. And when the time comes, take a decision. Make an informed choice. And each person can make his or her choice. Well said, Dr. Bati. We'll take another story. The governor of Plato State, Simon Lalong, on Thursday, signed the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Bill into law. The bill, which was passed into law by former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2015, is to prevent all forms of violence against persons in public and private life, including the prohibition of genital mutilation, forceful ejection of spouses, and harmful widowhood practices. The bill also outlaws abandonment of children, spouses, and other dependents without sustenance, and provides sanctions for battery rape, and harmful traditional practices. The governor said the law was approved as part of efforts to curb violence against women, men, and children in the state. I want to say congratulations to all mm -hmm. the states that have passed this. Um, Dr. Abati, your former boss, signed this bill in 2015. And it is so shameful that some states are still waiting. If we can pull up, I, I believe Lagos State has the Protection Against Domestic Violence Law, and Ekiti has the Gender-Based Violence Prohibition Law, where you can find some of those provisions found in the VAPP. Uh, now, this tracker here, shows some of the states that are yet to sign the bill. We have Kano State. Mm -hmm. We also have Kasina State, I believe. We have Niger, Niger State. We have Sokoto okay. State. Zamfara. We have Taraba. We have Yobe. We have Zamfara. I mean, what are they waiting for? Mm. Dr. Abbas. 18 states in total mm. have failed to domesticate the violence against uh, Persons Prohibition Act, known as the VAP Act. Mm -hmm. President Jonathan signed it into law, in, uh, signed the bill May 25, one of those a last Love minute, uh, you know, um, pieces of uh, legislation that President Jonathan signed. And the uh, advocacy for the VAP Act was based on the concern that violence against persons was becoming very serious. 
husbands killing their wives, wives killing their husbands, you know, just so much violence in the land. And people noticed or observed or advocated that the existing laws with regard to violence, you know, were too limited, particularly laws with relation to the definition of rape, spousal abuse, female genital mutilation. So that advocacy led into people pushing for that law over a period, a period of time. And then in 2015, it was signed. But before then, Lagos State had, that is a domestic that is. violence law, since 2007, the yes. kitty that you refer to, mm -hmm. domesticated the, the VAP, yeah. the gender-based violence uh, uh, law in 2019. Now, when the uh, Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition Act was uh, passed, it offered a more expansive definition of violence, from physical to domestic to social to even political violence, yes. and offered very strict definitions. Now, people often refer to its definition of rape. In the existing law, in the criminal code and the penal code, rape is defined as rape against a woman, right? When a man rapes a woman, and it focuses only on penetration beyond the labia majora, you know, but what they have done in, in the VAP Act was that it was expanded, that look, a man can also be raped. Yes, absolutely. And rape can be in different ways, and then stiffer punishment is offered. Female genital mutilation was not codified in the law previously. Now it is there. Now, under VAP Act too, major highlights include abandonment of spouse. Yes. Right? I you can't that. abandon your wife or your husband. No, you can't. They go to court. Now, there is also a spousal uh, abuse. There is also making a woman economically uh, over-dependent on you, you know, as a way of uh, discrimination against her, and so on and so forth. So it's a more expansive law. The only problem with it is that it is restricted only to the federal capital territory. The, that's the 2015 Act. And the jurisdiction is only the high court. You know, the federal high courts only have jurisdiction uh, over it, high courts of the federal capital territory, that is. So what the states have now done is that some of them have gone ahead to domesticate it. But some states, on cultural grounds, some of those states that you mentioned, they are 18 in number, refuse to domesticate it. Some of them pass the law. Some of houses of assembly pass the law. But yeah, the governors refuse to I give said, executive yes. assent, which now takes me to uh, Governor Lalong. Uh, given executive assent. The uh, domestication of the VAP Act in uh, Plato State was done as far back as 2020, but assent was not given. Now, uh, Governor Lalong, you know, has assented to it, and I think that, you know, it's a progressive piece Absolutely. of uh, legislation, uh, given the expansion uh, of its definition. The only problem is that aspects of it will appear to be a duplication or sections of the criminal code or the uh, penal code. But it is good that we have a more progressive piece of legislation uh, that, in particular, redefines the meaning of yeah. rape and the scope of violence. The most important thing, though, is yeah. enforcing these laws. And I'm really excited How you, you yeah. brought forward things like that. Yes. So I have dealt with a lot of cases like this, rape, violence against women and the likes. It's one thing to pass the law. It's another thing to create safe spaces for sufferers. You see, we have tried many times to bring sufferers out of the situation they are suffering. But the case is always, who takes care of me? Are there safe spaces where I can live? Who gives me economic sort of viability? Who helps me with my children? My husband is beating me. There are laws to that effect. I leave the house, then who takes care of me? So I, apart from passing the law, we should also put about an ecosystem. Absolutely. A support system of sufferers, places they can go. The government should even start by building what I call safe space homes. Anyway, some people will argue that government has not finished providing homes for people who are saying safe space homes, but they should do it. Doesn't and that's, that it doesn't stop them. That's the role of the states. Absolutely. They should put up infrastructure, homes where women can be kept or men can be kept, or anybody can be kept once they've been abused. 
because that is one part of it. And also, they should set aside funding to be able to run these homes effectively and social homes effectively, and also funding to be able to help them acquire soft skills. Because some women have been deliberately financially disenfranchised over mm. a period of time, or you know, taking their financial assets away from them because the men want to manipulate them. It also pushes me to talk about the child right law. And I will refer to something Governor Yerima said in an interview. He said, no law could hold me in the land as regards when he went ahead to marry somebody, a child, when that thing was trending, child not brand a couple of years ago. Why did he say that? Because Zamfara State has not domesticated the child right law. Oji, when you look at the state that have not domesticated VAP, they are the same state that have, not, dom yes. that, that have not domesticated child right law. Yes. We should call on these states to please be progressive, domesticate it, call a spade a spade, shun evil in our country. Because if a presidential candidate can say, oh, there's nothing wrong with me marrying it and under it because there are no laws, hello, there are laws to guard against marrying underage children as a stride in the child right law. But it's because Zamfara State, as a mother state that ought to have domesticated those laws, have not domesticated those laws. Well said. Child rights Five. act. Child rights act. Child rights act. But again, in terms of the states, take Ekiti and uh, Lagos. They are front runners. The, the Lagos State government has facilities for people to speak up. But will victims of violence speak up and seek help? That's another That's advocacy. part of the problem. That's another In uh, Ekiti State, push. they have what they call a sexual offenders register. Absolutely. Published on a regular basis, online and everywhere. You know, and that, those are two good examples of where, you know, uh, state governments have moved beyond the law to make sure that it is implemented. Well said, both of you. Thank you for that. We'll take our final story. A viral video of a female police officer begging for help after a driver who she had apprehended for allegedly committing a traffic offense drove up with her in his car has caught the attention of the Lagos State Police Command. While well, in the video, the woman ordered the driver to stop his car several times as she yelled out for help. Let's take a look at the video before we come back for a discussion. Help! I will not allow you to... Hey, help me! 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 If they carry me, they go, we are not know. So this was... I will not allow you to... This is so unacceptable. I, have, I mean, as funny as it is, this is so annoying. Really, really annoying. But the Lagos State Police Command has said this is forceful kidnap and yes. it is a felony. It's a crime. Unacceptable. Forceful kidnap. It's a crime. But please, police officers should stop jumping into people's That's cars. Another thing. Because they do the worst. I've had police officers in this country assault me in my own car. Yes. And last my officers. They jump into your car, they take your key from you, they brutalize you. Yeah. One kicked me and pushed no, me. No, unacceptable. I'm serious. In my own car, mm -hmm. because of the fact that mm -hmm. this. So if they don't want to be kidnapped, there are better ways. If somebody commits a traffic offense in the same country, all plate numbers are registered, yeah. and you have a record of plate number, why don't you just take my plate number, check through the I files, send a fine to my address, and I pay it or tell me to come out in court. Yeah. Because you don't even have the right to enforce the law in the first You need to take me to a traffic court in the first place. Right. But they are judge and jury because they want to collect their stupid, selfish bribe of 30,000 naira that doesn't even go to the state government they collect. Oh. I've had my own runnings with them. I know this is wrong, but sometimes I felt like driving the police officer off when they assaulted me in my own car. Oh. So it's both ways. Yeah. Help me, help me, help well, me. Well, well, this is not a case of yes. kidnap. The policeman, police person who said it's kidnapping, uh, was uh, exaggerating. So this will not stand as a case of kidnap. The punishment for who's state taking for kidnapping is 10 years imprisonment. So this is not really kidnapping. Policemen do not follow what they call their standard operating procedures. Simple. It's, a, it's an established matter. There is even a case that VIOs, for example, cannot ask you for vehicle particulars. Yes. Policemen, if they are in, doing a, what they call a stop and search, right, you can tell them that they, they cannot search your vehicle. You will ask them whether they have reasonable ground. The only reason why they can search your vehicle is if there is a suspicion that you have committed crime. So who determines that uh, uh, reasonable uh, uh, ground? <laughs> and if they must search your phone, or your laptop yes. as they do. They must provide a search warrant. Yes, they must. They cannot just start searching people's cell phones and, uh, and their laptops the way they do. So the woman herself is wrong to have jumped into yes. anybody's car. The issue that the police should be raising is the issue of discipline. Yes. Former inspector generals of police in this country have taught uh, these police people, 
Your job <laughs> is to ensure safety of lives and property. Your job is not to be sucking people's uh, uh, pot of soup. And she was calling for If they say drink in, in, in the trunk of your car, they will say they want to see whether that drink is <laughs> They will say, give me. It's a genuine give one. Give me to drink. drink. That's not the job of the police. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank Anyway, thank no, you very much. <laughs> thank you, Dr. It's Fati. true now. Thank you, Rafai. You guys have a great weekend. That's all I have for you on What's Trending Today. I'll see you all next week. Thank you.